Right, so let's knock it out of the way straight away. These are my picks. In case anyone's going to go into this video thinking, oh my god. Right, so let's get it out of the way straight away. Before anyone goes through this list and goes, how dare you pick that SSD over that SSD? These are my choices. These are my opinions, and they only reflect what I think. You may have a different experience. You may have dealt with any one of these brands many, many times in the past, and you formed your own experiences, your own opinions. I know I have too. I've dealt with most of the brands in this video over and over for the last few years, but these are my picks. I've picked these five, and although they are listed together one to five, they aren't necessarily better than a another there'll be cases where one is better than the other however the reason they're all in the top five ultimately is because they all bring their own special grace to the table in terms of a ps5 upgrade be it for capacity performance reliability price all of it and i picked these five because right now i would be happy with any of these five there are reasons why i'd like one or the other in different categories but when it comes to upgrading your ps5 during the beta and if you are going to do that make sure you back up all your save spots or your recorded footage that's important because yes they're not on the ssd but if something does go wrong in the boot beta you're gonna have to format your playstation and lose all of those so make sure you back them up or if you are going to wait until after the beta, maybe things have changed. And right now, although these are my five picks right now, we don't know where we're going to be in three to six to 12 months. There may be bigger, better, faster, more affordable, and ultimately more preferable SSDs in the future. But right now, this video is based on my top five PS5 compatible SSDs that I would pick and recommend for you to install. Let's go. That was a long old intro, wasn't it? But let's face it, when you make any list online, top three, top five, top ten, best of, there will always be people slamming it away in the comments telling you you are wrong. I know I'm one of them. So in today's video, although I'm going to talk about those five SSDs, do remember that this is not a list where one is intrinsically going to be better than the other overall. All of these five SSDs that I'm going to talk about are actually kind of the best in their own way. And hopefully as we go through these five, there will be elements of one or two of these SSDs where you go, hmm, I quite like that one. I think I might have to go for it. So let's go through my recommended five SSDs to install inside your PS5. Make sure you've got backups or wait until after the beta is done. But ultimately, let's crack on with number five. Number five for me was probably going to be obvious to a lot of you. It was always going to be the Gigabyte Aurora. So of all of the SSDs that I tested in my PS5 system, this is the one that not only arrived at, I would argue, the best price for the contained product you're getting. It includes an onboard heat sink as well. If we take another closer look at that, this SSD arrived at a very competitive price point for one and indeed two TB. On top of that, it arrives with that Fizon controller inside. And given that you're getting an SSD that not only has a heat sink on board, but is a completely PS5 sized um, heatsink on board that actually optimizes there over where the controller and the NAND was. I was impressed with this SSD before I even slammed it inside my PlayStation. And when I did, the performance again was first class. And then at least two of my four tests was a second faster than the internal SSD inside. And although its write speed wasn't exactly fantastic, later in this video you're going to hear about my opinions on write speed because I think there's been a lot of thrown around there, myself included that I think we all need to just clear out there. But although this drive is by no means the fastest of all the SSDs that I tested you know, throughout all of my testing, which I still haven't even finished yet, of PS5 SSDs, I've got to say, right now, as we review and go back to all of these SSDs that we tested before, with more rigorous testing coming up this week, with the likes of Rift Apart, Demon Souls, Spider-Man, and more, right now, this SSD still continues to impress me, particularly at its price point. Number four might surprise you, but once again, this is not about SSDs being better than the other, all about stand out, and that's why I recommend all five. But it is the Sabrent Rocket Plus. Now, the Sabrent Rocket Plus was one of the first SSDs that we did test on the PS5 in D. We tested it in a number of different ways, and even early doors. One of the things that I was impressed by was the Sabrent arriving with that nice metal label there on the top, with a lot of people wondering about heat sinks on PS5 SSDs and wondering about whether to use first or third party heat sinks this ssd not only arrives with a fairly kick-ass heat sink which i don't immediately have here to my hand but at the same time this ssd arrived 
up to a shocking 4TB and was available long before the PlayStation 5 SSD update became available. So Brent's one of those brands that I've got to give them credit because of all the SSDs that I've looked at throughout the videos on this channel and the rest that are coming later on this week with other SSDs and the review, the revisits of some of the other ones, I've got to say Sabrent is a brand that I've always heavily associated with like enclosures and stuff like that. And it's the idea they've not only brought out an SSD, but an incredibly kick-ass performing SSD with a 0.4 drive rights per day um, durability factor meant that they didn't even scrimp on that. And that's a common area where a lot of brands will often cut corners. Ultimately, the Sabrent arrived with the right capacity for people at the launch of this beta, which is why it was one of the first drives we tested. And to be perfectly honest, for the bulk of my testing, at least until the tail end of it, this was the score to beat in terms of the temperature that it maintained throughout its utility in both the PC testing and the PS5. And later on, when we did our performance testing, this was the benchmark for a long time. And ultimately, you really can't really go wrong with it in terms of console utilization. And now we're on to number three, and let's be honest, the majority of you watching this probably already know what the next three SSDs are going to be. It's just going to be a question of what order I present them to you in. And it's going to be the Samsung 980. The Samsung 980 for me was kind of an easy go-to all the way back back since the launch of the PS5 last year when it was launched I think like a week or two before or after Black Friday and like Prime Day the month before so so many people bought up the 980 Pro and have just been sitting on this drive for the better part of half a year eight months waiting for the PS5 to enable that slot and when they did enable it and this SSD was slammed inside and absolutely mwah, knocked it out so many people breathed a sigh of relief if you go to the comments of most of these videos you will find at least 10 people out of every 100 saying whoa glad i picked that up last year in the sale nice and i can't blame them for it because even when it was first launched last year the idea of a 7000 megabyte sequential read ssd was just unheard of at that juncture and even now eight months later it is still doing damn damn well and thanks to it being out there for a long amount of time they've got a lot more creative with the price structure and you can get it at quite an impressive price particularly for a samsung product as well Again, the only reason I wouldn't say it is a perfect SSD is that write speed internally. Something, again, we will touch on very, very shortly. But in almost every other way, it is a great SSD for a PS5 upgrade. And although the, the, you are maybe going to have to go third party on heat sinks, because although Samsung does do some heat sinks, the ones that I've seen, I've definitely seen better third party for the most part. But ultimately, the Samsung 980 Pro is still an incredible SSD. And there's a reason why if you look at any lists of the best or recommended SSDs for PS5, this one continues to remain in the top three. Oh, we're getting on to number two. And let's face it, let's save you a lot of time, everyone. It was going to be one of these two, wasn't it? Let's face it, these two have largely become the score to beat when it comes to upgrading your PS5 for storage. The WD Black SN850 and the Fire Cuda 530. Both of them have gone very different approaches from the brands. These are two brands like Nintendo and Sega, like Xbox and PlayStation, that have butted heads many, many times. And that's not good for good high performance. SSDs was it but these two SSDs here are easily the one that a lot of people have got in their basket even now or it's arriving today via Prime or something so which one of these two am I saying is number two and again not hierarchical remember that all of these in their own way are the best SSDs I'm gonna say the WD is my second pick there the reason I'm picking it as my second pick although it is an incredible SSD and it definitely countered a lot of my earlier concerns about right performance of this SSD, even in the low to medium to high tiers and that durability, it definitely proved me wrong in the testing. When we did five games tests, it loaded quicker than the internal SSD on three different tests. It is an incredible SSD and much like the Samsung, because it's been in the market since I believe October, November of 2020, when it was first kind of little dribs and drabs arrive towards the end of the year they have got incredibly competitive with the pricing as well and the pricing of the wd black right now is probably the best of all of the ssds today 
on top of that, of all the heat sinks that we talked about, the WD heat sink that this arrives with is still the best heat sink for PS5. As much as I love um, the um, Aurora uh, 7000S heat sink that's built onto it, again, this arrives at a lower price point and that heat sink is probably the most sleek. It actually is even smaller for the PS5 installation. And ultimately, the WD Black, and of course, heavy recommendations from Mark. Let's face it, it was always going to be at the top there. Originally, this wasn't in my top three, but after testing, I had to eat my words. Again, it's just that issue of rights that for me is something that, although we're not considering it now, is something that's going to come up later. And do hang on to the end of the video because I will talk a lot more about rights and why it's not an issue now or why I think it will potentially be something to consider later on. It was absolutely pointless building this drive up because you knew it was going to be there at the end, isn't it? The Seagate Fire Cuda 530. This is the SSD that I have been tipping for a long, long, long time to be the PS5 SSD of choice. When this first got spoken about, or at least publicly spoken about, about a month and a half, two months ago, I'd already picked it as my PS5 SSD of choice. Even prior to that, when you looked at the release strategy of Seagate, you knew the Fire Cuda 530 was coming as way back as January, February, even March at the start of the year. It's just a question of when, and a lot of it came down to the Fizon controller there. Now, this SSD has to be said, it is by far in the 1TB, the 2TB, and the 4TB, the highest performing SSD on the market right now. It just is. The 500 gig as the one I've got here, slightly less so. It has been outpaced by a number of the SSDs we've talked about today, but at the 1, the 2, and the 4TB, unquestionably the fastest. But it's not just about speed there, both in sequential read and sequential write. The reason it makes my pick is that question of durability. The price difference between this and the other ones, this one's more expensive. If every other SSD, every £100 on there, this is going to cost you £110. For every £220 on there, it's going to cost you £240 and so on and so forth. But that extra money you're paying for is about durability within the drive's life. Yes, a number of you may counter that this SSD isn't going to anywhere near the hammering that you're going to game two or three hours a day. Why should you care that much about durability? Just because this has 0.7 drive rights per day rating, why should you care about durability if you're not going to max it out? Well, the higher the durability is there, that doesn't mean that you have to hammer it to 0.7 or 70% drive utility in its lifespan. It means it's got some serious durability behind it. And that 176 layer NAND inside is a big, big, big part of that and even assists uh, performance, of course, as well. On top of that, it arrived with data recovery services included three years, which again, I have tested personally on the channel while we took a hard drive, dipped it in a, in a bowl of water, smashed it down the stairs, dropped it on the floor, hit it against filing cabinets. The drive was buggered. We sent it to, fire, um, to Seagate. They sent it back and recovered 98.9% .9 of the data. Fair play to them, and that's included. I'll be honest with you, you shouldn't really do any of those things I just said, but still nonetheless, knowing that you've got data recovery services inside is a good, good thing. The other thing to bear in mind with this drive and that durability comes down to if you're a professional gamer, a streamer, an esports user, these are people that they're going to need a drive that's got serious durability when they play for 6, 8, 12 hours a day professionally. And that's when a drive like this is going to become handy. Now, I mentioned about rights earlier on in the video when I said I would talk a lot more about rights. Anyone that's been following my videos where I've been doing bench tests of my PS5 with each of these individual SSDs, you will know that while I was going through it, we would copy data to and from the PS5. And every time we would copy data from the PS5 internal storage onto these SSDs, and at the end of the video, copy data from the SSDs onto it, it was by no means fast. We were moving a couple of hundred gig of data at most, and it would still take several minutes, despite the fact that the internal SSD and the M2 SSDs have got read-write performance in the thousands. So why would it take so long? And that's because the transfer of data between the system is definitely being bottlenecked in some way. There's some kind of encryption, there's some kind of compression, there's some kind of security checks, block data certification, maybe for anti-piracy, it all happens in the middle there. Which, on the one hand, might make you think, well, sequential write doesn't matter. Maybe the SSD inside the PlayStation has a low sequential write, and it's focusing on sequential read, hence those benchmarks. And when we break it down into the IOPS, which is individual input outputs per second, then it might be slightly different. 
but I disagree. I think the write speed you're going to be having when you're copying data is not going to be the same as write data or active write data when you're utilizing these devices in real-time gaming scenarios. Now, right now, you can only use these SSDs for game data. That's the only thing you can use them for. You can't back up your saves to them. You can't back up your recordings. You can't use them for streaming. You can't use them for any of that. It's just game data. But that's definitely going to change in the PlayStation's lifespan. The recording qualities alone are enormous. Have you ever looked at your video list there when you go into your recordings, even if you're someone that never presses the share button? If you actually look, every trophy you've ever had, the game stores 15 to 30 seconds by default of recording. You can disable it, but nonetheless, when the PlayStation 5 records data, it records massive amounts of data. And although you, you know, would rather record to the internal SSD. If the time comes when your external SSD has a higher write performance, you may shift the recording pattern of your PlayStation onto the M2, because you will want to have parallel sources of game data and recording to make sure you're not over utilizing your storage media for gameplay professionally and recording. Same goes for streamers or those that capture, uh, utilize systems for capture of gameplay recordings for YouTube channels and more. And I think right now, Although um, write information from these SSDs isn't as important, I think it is something to bear in mind down the line. And when judging an SSD for upgrading your PS5, I hope a year or two down the line that people watch this video and go, yes, write suddenly became important. And a lot of people have been looking at SSDs like the, the PMY um, um, XLR8 series, the CS3040, or they've been looking at the Firecuda 520 that we tested before, and they've gone, yeah, that'll be fine. That some of those SSDs don't have a great write, and you will potentially suffer down the line. And that's why I talk about write a lot in these videos. And a lot of people think I'm being very contrary, but I'm not. Factor it in. If it's only going to cost you an extra 10 to 20 quid a terabyte to go down this road for better durability or better write performance later on, and you're going to have this SSD in your system for the next five, six, seven years at least, why make the saving? It's no unnecessary. But these have been my five picks for SSDs you should put inside your PS5 M2 SSD expansion slot, whether you go for the beta or you play it safe and wait to the full release. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, there's a link in the description, all the usual stuff down there. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more. And of course, I look forward to showing you the big, big, big head-to-head -head on these SSDs coming later this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.